everybody. How are we doing today? Um, so yes, uh, have you ever, you, you hear those stories every now and then about a building collapsing, right? And you like get really terrified about, about like, you know, what would happen in that situation? Um, I had that experience last weekend. There were 1,300 plus people jumping and screaming simultaneously and the whole floor was shaking at certain points. I was like, oh gosh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna be on the news, but what a way to go. I seen true mother. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about it. Uh, as, as she said, you know, we went there with a bunch of, uh, you know, it really wasn't just second gen, there was third gen, fourth gen, there were first gen, uh, every single young person they could, they could pull together and bring. I mean, it was, it was just amazing, the, the energy in the room. Um, I wanna share some photos. We, again, this was after True Mother visited us, so we tried to gather as many people as we could that we knew in, in the Bridgeport area, and everybody was off running and excited to see their friends and, and meet with people they hadn't seen in forever, so this is all we managed to pull together. But uh, I thought it was nice, uh, right in front of uh, the International Peace Education Center in Las Vegas, they have this giant uh, you know, uh, earth statue, I guess you could call it. Uh, it's, it's nice, you could see it from the road as you're driving by. Um, and and uh, you know, so we thought that's a good place for us to go. Yeah, so I don't have AI software to remove all the people in the background, but that's the best we can handle. Uh, this was me, I call this the double bags under my eyes <laughs> photo. Yes, I was very, very tired. But can you see how many people were in this room? It was, it was amazing. I mean, it's, it's been a dozen years since I had that experience of being so packed with, you know, just youthful exuberance, right? And again, I say youthful exuberance because in this room, I was probably like 10 to 20 years older than most of the people there. And that is crazy to me. Um, yes, I, I try to get more of it in the photo because there's even people Back here, off to the side, yes, you can see Joe Hinkle's amazing beard. If you know Joe Hinkle, he's from California. Um, we also, uh, from a, a wonderful uh, donation, we were able to take out uh, you know, all the youth with us to a Korean barbecue, which was super fun, uh, and it was amazing. I mean, I, was, I wasn't sure if I could ever top you know, Connecticut or Queens, New York level Korean barbecue, or you know, Korean Korean barbecue from Korea but this is giving it a run for its money. Um, I have a short video I wanted to play for you. Please excuse any screeching. Does it, does it work or doesn't work? Oh, I should I get it to play? Oh, there you go. <laughs> So it was, it was nice too, we were able to get close enough that we could see her, the corners of her mouth curl up in a smile at the uh, reception she received. So uh, like Simone said, we got all the way up to the, as front as we could get, except for then they brought in these uh, third, I think 63rd gen children to uh, sing a song and a little dance for her. Uh, it was again, amazing. Uh, here we are in the underground section where they serve food for, for everybody, which was cool as Elizabeth and Hector know was a bit of a chaos and made us, our brains hurt a little bit trying to feed all these people simultaneously. They had two servers for, you know, 800 people essentially handing out food. It was, uh, it was chaos, but it was, it was just energy. It was great. Um, and then again, a little bit more of our Korean barbecue photos. Um, I didn't want to spend too long because I wanted to have the opportunity to sh have other people sharing. Um, I did want to Briefly, they'll go over, uh, True Mother gave a speech while she uh, was visiting us, and I don't want to do the whole thing. I'm going to send out the speech to you so that you can read it for yourselves. I just wanted to point out a couple of 
highlights to it, uh, statements she made that I felt were just very powerful. Uh, the first statement she made that I just really resonated with me was the, you know, it was one of the first lines. She says, you are pure water, right? And that's, that's cool. Pure water, very nice. I like being pure water. What does that mean? Uh, you know, she, she talked about how over the course of humankind, they've removed original sin and provided us with this opportunity to be pure. But she also wanted to point out, we do not remain pure if we sit still. If pure water comes to a pool in the, in the mountains and it stagnates and it sits, what happens to pure water? Algae grows in it. Algae grows in it. It gets dirty. Uh, it, it's full of bacteria. It's no longer pure. It is stagnated. It is not good. She mentioned we have to keep moving. We can't just rest on our laurels and say, we did it. Chung Wong-gung is established. You know, we're in the new era uh, of the Chun Shim Wan. We're all good. We'll, we'll stop and relax here and be done. No, True Father never stopped moving. He never stopped innovating, never stopped making proclamations and setting goals for us. The same reason why she also related back to the establishment of uh, you know, the new Peace Palace the new Museum in Korea, uh, why they're establishing these giant marble buildings, which for me was a little difficult, I, I have to confess, to understand the purpose behind a giant marble cold uh, edifice to our church. But she said, these are essentially, you know, physical manifestations of, of our milestones, of our, of our movement. As we're moving forward, we commemorate, we move on. Right? And, and that's what we're doing here. We're, we're setting a statement. We're setting this is a point where we've gotten to in our movement of pure water. And we can't stop there. We have to keep pushing ourselves and have to keep moving or else we will start to you know, turn bad. Not that any of us have turned bad. Just saying we're preparing ourselves to not. Um, the other statement, you know, again, she talks uh, about America... Korea and Japan being the three major architects of our movement, just saying that those were the three places from which uh, we have to provide for each other. We have to work in conjunction. We can't just say, oh, you're in trouble. We're going to leave you alone because we got a little bit of an issue ourselves. She said, no, we have to support and assist each other because that's what we do. We are part of a trinity to provide God's kingdom on earth. So she wanted to make it clear that America is one of those major parts of her plan and her return to America to talk with the youth and energize them, and, you know, a resurgence, right, if you will, uh, was part of that process of making sure that we are going to continue to propel and assist and work with each other. Um, yes, and then a whole lot more. There was, you know, she talked about, uh, you know, the uh, only begotten daughter as well. But I'll let you read those words yourself. I'm sure you've heard quite a few on your own. Um, and then she said, too, make sure that we are using our placement as one of the main groups to align and educate our peers and the people around us, provide them with a good example. So those were, or that was the brief summary of True Mother's words. We'll send those out later today so that you have them as well. And I am going to ask a wonderful uh, second gen to come up and give a little testimony I got to know him a lot better during this. I was so impressed by his poise and commanding aura and his ability to lead when I was so tired I could barely think. And he was like, you know, we probably should make sure that we get this out of the car before we go. I'm like, oh, yeah, we do need to get that out of the car before we go because that's our baggage and we're going to return the car. So, yes. Thank you, Micah. Please come up and provide us with some thoughts. I just want to say first a uh, big thank you to Pastor Simone and Saya for planning this. I know it wasn't easy, it took a lot of effort, especially while we were over there. A lot of last minute changes. So just round of applause to them for everything that they did. Yeah, so I'm going to keep this brief, hopefully two minutes. Um, I think the biggest thing that I gained from my trip to Las Vegas wasn't actually so much about my experience with True Mother, but more about my experience with the community as a whole. And um, yeah, 
like you saw in the video that uh, Pastor Seiya put up, when uh, Chu Mother came in the room, there was such an amazing energy where everybody was clapping, everybody was cheering. There was so much love being poured out, not only for Chu Mother, but for everybody else in the room, for our peers, for our friends. And throughout my years growing up in this church, I think the biggest thing that I've gained is that sense of community, that sense of caring for each other and being there for one another. Yeah, I'm still growing in my understanding of true mother and true parents as a whole. And I'm not fully, I, I don't know if I'll ever fully understand that, but I think experiences like these help me to grow my understanding of not only true parents, but also our church as a whole. So I just want to say a big thank you to my parents for allowing me the opportunity to go and to our community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Micah. So next up, we actually um, next up we actually have an amazing testimony by. Um, it's actually going to be the matching testimony of amazing sister uh, Jung Hee and Ken. Um, they're going to kind of give a little bit of a, a background of her, the, her process of matching and her story um, and the inspiration behind it, and you know the whole process. So I'm going to invite up Jung Hee and Ken. Thank you everybody for this opportunity and uh, you know as a, a feeling for parent you know you feel most fulfilled like when you hear like your child is going to get blessed and you have much and it's going for that direction you feel your existence is like I made it you know, right like you all understand that and uh, so I want to give a few tips over here that you know or making that for the goal uh, you know through Parents clearly mention, you know, uh, what, you know, there's a one time like you know, some parent asked, okay, what do you think as a parent, the most important thing? You know, two fathers said very clearly, give blessing to your child. Yeah, that's point, period. He said that. Right, so uh, uh, my wife, Miki and I have been preparing, you know, for many things, uh, for her to be, uh, you know, like to get blessed. So, uh, Dr. Young emphasized, like, you know, uh, this engagement ceremony, uh, you know, we, in Korea it's called engagement ceremony. Over here it's a commitment ceremony, but it's more deeper, right, engaged. So, uh, we felt it was important that parents really get involved for that. So, uh, uh, the point is, you know, the child often doesn't notice the parent's influence. But the influence is indeed substantial. I observed significant parents' involvement in a key moment. You know, as a parent, you know, like, you know, you give a key moment, like, really some influence. So uh, uh, the format was in those from two parents. So it works, like, you know, if you stay on the format. So what we did was first, Mickey and I discussed, okay, when's a good timing to start giving him, giving her the uh, education for blessing. And uh, so uh, we started to take her to a coffee shop and uh, started to discuss, okay, like, uh, would you like to receive a, start to receive a uh, blessing education? You know, we didn't say like, you know, okay, you want to receive blessing. You want to, you know, start preparing blessing. We said, do you want to start receiving education for blessing, right? So she agreed. So. Uh, uh, I think she was like uh, 20 years old. She's 23 now. So we look for the, some resources like uh, MatchNet and FamilyPet. They all had uh, resources. So uh, you know, uh, we found this eight weeks. Uh, what was it called? Uh, the, she said. Devoted. Yeah, devoted. Yeah, Elijah was in there, and uh, so uh, you know, uh, she did once a week, 60 minutes video, and after that, 60 minutes. 
discussion. So uh, after eight weeks, we continue uh, you know, giving that education with using a match net, and we went to coffee shops, start you know, uh, discussing about that. Uh, basically, like we, you know, we let her to really understand that value for blessing. You know, we focus on like you know uh, how valuable it is the blessing. You know, that cosmic value that you know to parents in heaven, uh, in a you know highest place, and you know all these uh, blessed couples, or, you know all these. Uh, people created this Sophia, the royal family that is the highest place. And you know, we mentioned like you know, the true father mentioned it's like a piece of a gold sand to find in the vast ocean that much that you know uh, it's incredible value. So like you know, uh, and she started to deeply uh, understand more and more. Then she started to express her desire to receive the blessing gradually. I think it was between two to third months, she said that. So uh, uh, then, uh, Mikhail and I asked, do you happen to, happen to know someone you are interested in or anyone who's interested in you, okay? This is a very important, interesting point, okay? And uh, this is from Chompion headquarter. This might be a little bit surprising for first generation because uh, it's something they said they have their own intuition, the antenna, the sense they can, their matches, you know, they can look for their own matches, okay? Uh, we talked to a head of a second generation department, we talked to, you know, some days, you know, engage in this area of matching uh, coordination. And they said, the number shows, out of hundreds of hundreds of cases, they said, the highest successful rate is when these young individuals find their own matches. Yeah, because they're already there deciding. You know, so like, you know, like it's not like you're, you're introducing and asking, okay, do you want this person? And uh, you know, uh, this is a little bit surprising. They said, okay, we've been influencing second generation with our first generation habit. Like, you know, so, in a way, like they kind of like withdraw their feeling, they hide their, their you know, feeling, right? But they said, uh, engage with them. Do you like somebody? Do you have somebody in your mind? Or somebody's interested in? They, they said to talk about that, and if, it, you know, if they have a lead, just go after that. They said, especially if you, know, you can ask, like, okay, are you interested in somebody? They said, usually they said, no, no, they're kind of trained to hide their feeling, hide their feeling from you, right? But, you know, if you said, do you have somebody kind of showing us some interest, like, you know, keep talking to you, come close to you, you know, and talk, and, you know, then it's easier to detect their, you know, that you say, oh, somebody is kind of keep coming to talk to me. So it's already you have somebody interested to your child then you can see if your child is also interested in him. That's the highest success rate, they said, okay? So uh, this, is, this was very interesting. So we followed the format, and we asked to John He, like, are you interested in <laughs> So then she said, okay, I prayed, and she will give a, you know, her version of a, uh, you know, uh, breath, I mean, the, you know, testimony, it's very interesting. You hear, like, she had a condition that you hear she had a dream about, about him, okay? Repeatedly, uh, his name is Sonse, and it was from like message from Spirit World. So, uh, Mickey and I reached out to the matching coordinator uh, in New York for us, and they introduced to the, the one in California, and they talked to their parents. And so, uh, you know, uh, we got email, uh, you know, uh, address. So, uh, I have sent the email, and they requested a Zoom meeting with the father, and we talked and sent a simple profile you know, with pictures and a few sentences, you know, very simple. And uh, from there, uh, the parents, you know, we started having a, the Zoom meeting. And uh, uh, so from there, uh, discussion initiated. Uh, so uh, this is a family from California. So, uh, so both sides followed the, uh, the lead for a matching coordinator, and they you know, follow the format. 
And uh, so he was, uh, at the time, was dedicated the GPA commander, uh, right? So, uh, um, and he, he just heard, so I think he was out of blue, I think, at the time. So uh, later on, you know, he started to receive blessing education from parents. Parents says, okay, look, I, you know, they are serious, like uh, what's his age, and he wanted, you know, they wanted him to receive blessing. So uh, they engaged discussion that he started to develop uh, to understand the value of, uh, I'm sure he understood a lot of the value of the blessing, the education, and he started to develop the desire to receive the blessing. So in the end, so this is the last slide, slide for me, uh, last couple. Okay, so uh, the power of Chon Shiwon. This is amazing, I tell you. This is a, uh, Chon Shiwon, the one that like, really matched them, I believe. Uh, they went to there by coincidence. Yeah, they met over there. And they had a prayer, like you hear from her. And you know, when she came back, you know, we are all spiritual, and you, you have a moment, you feel spiritually, you know? I felt very st spiritually. That was it, I felt, you know? Because, uh, you know, that spirit world coordinate, you know, they seriously, they look for, okay, candidate, you know, the blessing. And, you know, they bring the ancestors come up, and they start to let them talk to each other. So they agree, they make agreement, why that? Ancestors, they look at their descendants more than themselves. So, okay, our descendants, okay, it's going to be this kind of you know, person and the lineage. So, like, they, are, they agree, okay? After ancestors agreed, and behind their two father uh, in spirit world is orchestrated. You know, like, he matches the first gen, right? And uh, he does the same thing in the spirit world. Yeah, he's very serious about that, and he's being active very much in there, and behind it. So, uh, uh, and God says, okay, go ahead, you know. And God many times watches or hear the report from True Father and Spirit of the Ancestors. Okay, so that way they agreed, and, and parents agreed. So we just needed to uh, give a detail, uh, you know, for uh, where to have it, the date and all the stuff that like you can imagine, right? So we did it. We found very baby estate was open. That uh, they did it in this beautiful place in this garden, and we had a uh, um, uh, lunch and dinner in here. And uh, so uh, uh, you know, and we took them to uh, the beach, the seaside park. So uh, this is the last. So they are open. For us, like four or five hundred dollars a day, uh, we let them stay for a couple of nights, okay? And they usually charge like four or five thousand dollars for three days for uh, for commercial purpose. But for us, they give us like super discount, right? But uh, the downside is like you know, uh, you maybe get canceled because they get that this business going that we have to kind of uh, you know. Uh, we don't want to cancel, you know, because they are coming from California with the flight and stuff. So, you know, uh, we prepare. In case it was canceled, we're going to have a ceremony in here and, you know, have a just, uh, you know, for them to stay in a holiday inn or somewhere nearby. So that way, you know, it was okay and it worked. So, like, if you uh, have a ceremony, you know, in the future, like, if you want to use this facility, just talk to Justin Okamoto and they will help you. Yeah, so everything... Uh, went well, and uh, we're so grateful to God and to parents, and that was my bargain. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, thank you, Appa, for sharing your uh, perspective as uh, my parent and the first gen. Hi, uh, my name is Jung Hee. Um, some of you guys may know me. I was kind of born and raised in this community for a while. I'm 23 now, and I just got matched. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, I was asked to share a little bit of my testimony, and um, I have like 10 minutes, and it's a really long story. <laughs> so if you have any questions, you can like ask me as after service. But um, I wanted to keep it to like three uh, main points 
and uh oh right yeah <laughs> so um yeah i want to keep it to like kind of how we started um, some challenges that we faced a gratitude point that i have and my main takeaway so um, it is a long story but Basically, yeah, as my dad shared, you know, we were starting to kind of do level one uh, blessing education. And I had already done uh, gap years on done in Europe and uh, GPA. So that kind of opened my mind a little bit more also to the idea of like the blessing and seeing like other second gen older like blessed couples set such a good example also really inspired me. So as I was doing this blessing education, um, yeah, somewhere in 2021, in around like May, I think, I started having these dreams. Um, they were like, yeah, they were really interesting because there's three dreams. On the first night, I dreamed of like, uh, some say space. It was kind of blurry, but I could just see like a big smile. And there was like green grass and the blue sky. And he was like smiling really big. And I couldn't really see his face too well. But um, I woke up and I was like, okay, that's interesting. You know, I think that was Sensei. And I was just moving on with my day. And the second day I had this dream that was really simple. It was like a white background and like a black, like his name in like black letters. And then the like background is just like blinking, like blink, blink, blink. <laughs> it's like Sensei Morita. And I woke up and I was like, like, hmm, like, I wonder what this means. <laughs> like, I was like, mm, okay, but like, I was still like doing CARP and I was like going to school and I was going to work and I was doing my own thing. So I kind of like didn't think about it. And then the third day in a row, I was like kind of freaked out because like I woke up with this loud, booming voice that was just like, Song Say Morita. And I like woke up and I was like, what? Um, I woke up and I was like, oh shoot, like maybe this is something I need to like look into. So I decided to do a seven day prayer condition and I was kind of like sharing my uh, heart with God because I was receiving the blessing education, but I didn't feel like, oh, I'm ready to be in a matching process. Like I'm, yeah, I didn't feel like that. And I also had a lot of like fears um, because it's a scary thought, I think. Um, maybe some second gen can relate that you're going to spend like your whole life and eternity with someone and things might not work out or something might happen. But um, yeah, I was sharing these thoughts with God in my prayers. And on the sixth day of my um, like prayer condition, uh, there was like a 40 day youth condition for Hundoke going around where we would get like texts of like mother's words every day at 6 a.m. And so on the sixth day, I just decided to look at my phone and the hundake, she was like talking about Russia and she had never like talked about Russia before, but my um, current match, he's like half Russian and half Japanese. And she mentioned Russia like seven times in the uh, hundake that we received. So I was like, oh, like, that's really interesting because on that um, day, I had asked God for like a sign of whether I should really like go through with like starting a process with him. And um, you know, that was like a pretty clear sign, I guess, but I was still very hesitant. So on the last day of my condition, I was like, God, can you just give me like one more sign? And this time, like, I, I think I'll like, yeah, I'll like do my best you know, to be open to it. So uh, on the seventh day, like, I couldn't really sleep because I was like, there's so many thoughts racing through my mind and I had a lot of nerves. So I went uh, to watch the sunrise at Seaside Park. And uh, as I was walking along the beach, these two like ducks like were like following me and they're like next to each other and swimming there. And it was like really cute. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. And I was like singing holy songs and I like, it became 6 a.m. and I looked at my phone and your mother was kind of sharing about like um, providence and how we might not always understand spirit world or like uh, providential will, but um, 
like how important it was to God and to her and to parents and like how, um, yeah, like how as second gen and like she was talking about like Russian university students again and Gorbachev and stuff too. But um, she was saying like how we don't really understand our responsibility so much all the time, but how important it was to her. And after I read that Hundoke, I think it kind of hit me that I wanted to determine to start a process with Sungsei. So I know it's like a long beginning part. And then, you know, and it sounds kind of like really, like really out there. Like if it hadn't happened to me, I wouldn't have believed it myself. But um, after I read the Hundoke, these two like swans, like I kid you not, swans were in the water and they just kind of swam past me and they were like next to each other and like one was in front of the other and then the other would like catch up and then the other one would go in front and the other would catch up and they were just swimming like side by side and they passed me. And then that was when I felt also artistically like in my heart like wow, like maybe Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is something that I should do. So you would have you would think that after all of that it would be like sunshine and rainbows, you know? Like everything would just work out. That's kind of how I felt. Like, oh yeah, once we start talking, everything's going to work out. But that was not the case. And um for like <laughs> it was really hard actually. Um I had a lot of like challenges when it came to just even in the start, like, we were getting along fine, but, like, I really struggled with being, like, vulnerable about um, my, like, weaknesses or things that I didn't really want to show about myself. I would kind of pick and choose, like, oh, I only want to show the best parts of myself. I don't want to show, like, parts that, you know, like, that I'm not as, like, proud of. But, um, yeah, also, like, pressure from like parents or like just like oh I have this responsibility to like get blessed and stuff I, I don't know if any second gen can relate but it's like a lot of pressure and I was just like really freaked out and the fear of like yeah so many different factors was a challenge so actually after five months of talking we ended up uh, both deciding that we were going to stop talking um, and that was that um, yeah, and then there was a point where I was kind of like asking God, like, then what was the point of all of those dreams? <laughs> because I had gotten an approach from like other people before, but I kind of rejected them because I never felt like really ready. But this time I was like, I want to, I want to try this. And it didn't work out. So I was kind of hitting an all time low in my life of faith. And it was really hard. So I, I decided to go to the Chung Shim one in Las Vegas as like an intern for a few weeks um, to like pray and just offer up the experience. And while we were in the process, we had both said to each other that we were not going to be going to Las Vegas. Um, he was like, yeah, I'm not going to go. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go. Because um, there was a carp workshop happening. But I went there as an intern, and he ended up being asked to go as like another brother from his carp chapter. And we both ended up meeting there. Oh, I'm definitely going over 10 minutes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so at the Chungshim one, we met. And yeah, we, there was a lot of like mixed feelings, but I felt like um, we should talk. So I um, reached out and we had a little like heart to heart. And this time we actually shared more about like the deeper, like everything that was going on under the surface and also established the fact that we actually liked each other, which is an important part of a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> that we had gotten to at that point, but we never really shared. So um, I think that kind of, that experience of just like having that heart to heart opened up a possibility of us talking again. And somehow eight months after January of 2023, we had our commitment ceremony and everything worked out and it was more smooth sailing from there. Um, but yeah, um, some of my gratitude points that I wanted to share is, of course, like his existence. And uh, I put our purity just because, like, uh, it is both he and I's first relationships. And I felt like the kind of love we have is very pure. So, like, we don't really know what we're doing, but we both try our best to, like, do what we think is best, best for each other, where the other will feel loved and 
I think it's like really cute. <laughs> like, anyways. Um, yeah, not to say that like if you've been in a relationship or a matching process before that it won't work out like that because it can't. But I just appreciate that and also like our jokes. I know, you know, he always makes me laugh and smile, and I hope I can make him laugh and smile. And I know that when I'm around him, I'm always smiling. So uh, I'm very grateful, and uh, I'm grateful for my friends and my support system, like my matching advisor and. My friends, because they gave me a more objective viewpoint when sometimes, like, even just talking with my parents or praying to God wasn't, like, uh, helping so much. And then, of course, I'm grateful to my parents and his parents um, for, like, reaching out and talking together throughout the whole process and also God and true parents' guidance. So, yeah, my main takeaway from this journey is that it's never easy and the journey is continuous, but I feel happier and more content than I thought I could ever be in a relationship. And um, I have God and true parents and my parents and his parents to thank for that. Um, and yeah, one thing I forgot to write as well is that I wanted to share with, actually there's not many of the younger second gen here because they're all away, but I wanted to also emphasize the importance of trusting your own like intuition. I think that's also a very important part of the process because no matter what God says or your parents say or the Hunduke says like if you don't feel it in your heart then it, I don't think it will work in the end so yeah that was just my uh, experience with the matching process and these are some photos from our commitment ceremony um, that are end of us that I wanted to end with so thank you for listening. Thank you.